Also, more music. One of the best guitar players in the music yes. industry, in the world, is coming to Folsom this weekend. Cody's standing by to chat with him this morning. Hey, Cody. Not only one of the best guitar players you'll ever get to hear, also the second tallest guy in rock and roll. Jerry James Nichols joining us right now. Is that true? Are you the second tallest <laughs> rock and roller? And therefore, who is the tallest? Well, the, the tallest rocker I've ever met was Sebastian Bach from Skid Row. Yes. Oh, really? By far. I. And when I see someone that's tall, I'm about six, six. And when I saw him, I went, this guy's. <laughs> Is he that tall? Wow. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea he was that tall. Brother, it's good to talk to you. We've been trying to get you here yeah. on the stage. We just can't make it work. But next time you're around, we're going to do this. We're going to do this proper. Next time I'm coming in, this is, uh, we got to stop this Zoom thing. I need to actually come into the stage and uh, have a proper rock session. Now, uh, one of my photographers, uh, Dave McCain, he's a good, big guitar player, loves playing guitar, ran in here. He says, ask him, does he like light or heavy gauge strings? Oh, that's funny. Tell him I'm right in the middle. So my, my strings on my guitar, they're, they're not too light because I bend all the time when I'm playing. And uh, I know the audio is not working too well, but... I have to keep it in the middle. If it's too heavy since I'm playing all the time, I, I just, uh, my hands get so beat up. So it's right oh, in the middle. Tell them. Gotcha. Dave, you good? You yeah, good? I'm good. Okay, go shoot something. <laughs> you're supposed to be working right now. Go, 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 go. All right, my friend. Dave. That guitar you're holding in your hands, is that the famous, the famous Dorothy? This is it. So the story on this, the quick rundown, this was given to me by a fan. This is one of the first Les Pauls ever, and it will be gracing the stage in Folsom on Saturday. It's an early 1952, Ooh. and the story with this guitar is someone hit me up online, and they said, hey, I know you like Les Pauls. This guitar landed in my yard after a tornado what? in Peoria, Illinois, in 2013. What? So you can see on the back. Look at that. All of the, let's see if I can get it in the right light. Yes. All the scratching. That, and it's, what? I, I nicknamed it Dorothy after the tornado, but hands down one of the best guitars i've ever played and i tour all over the world with this guitar now it's um it's quite simply like it's it's like the holy grail yeah and uh, like i said i'm gonna have it in Folsom this saturday that is like the most rock and roll story ever <laughs> it really is man. It's, it's it's so crazy and uh the best part about this guitar is um as it ages it gets better it's like i don't know you know that old saying they don't make them like they used to yeah but some of these are true yeah, it's crazy. I mean, honestly, like it survived a tornado and now it's rocking the stage this weekend. Uh, you got a new line of guitars coming out, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I'm so excited. In November, my third signature guitar with Epiphone through Gibson Guitars comes out. And um, like I said, it's the third one. I'm super excited about it. And yeah, as a kid, I never dreamed that far to have signature guitars. Yeah. And a lot of it is based on this old guitar so it's really cool now uh the price end you you kind of made sure that people could afford it because guitars get very expensive so why was that important to you so for me i remember i mowed lawns to get my first cool guitar and when i got approached to these signature guitars they said well, we can do really high end and make only a limited amount or we can do something that's a little bit more on uh, on the lower end that people could actually afford and play and I've always been very, very passionate about getting guitars in everyone's hands, not making it just an elitist thing and really being able to say, hey, if you go cut lawns like I did or, you know, you uh, you save up enough in the in a few months, you can buy my guitar. And I think that's the coolest part is having um, a lot of kids come to shows with their guitars. They have me sign them and just being able to put music and the power of guitar, not only in someone's hands with a lot of money, but just anyone that really can get under a guitar. It's great. Yeah, that's great. That's great, man. Okay, Saturday night, Folsom, go be there. Yes. Go be there. Come on, let's go. Folsom, now, get ready. Now, people in Folsom just got to be prepared. You need to, you need to tip for waiters and waitresses very well because you're going to blow the roof off that place. They're going to have to buy a new it, roof. They're going to buy a new roof. And also, if you hear any of those like cyber mornings or anything, there's no tornadoes. It's just me with my guitar. <laughs> Jared, thank you so much. We're working this. We got to get you to the stage. We got to do this. Next time. All right. Next, next time. time I'm coming. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, man. It's good to see you again. See you soon. See you. Back to you, John. If you wrote that tornado story like in a movie about a guitar god, people would mm -hmm. be like, no. Yeah, that's, no, that's no, a bit, that that's a bit true. much. No, no way. No yeah. way. That's amazing. All right.